seven. Barrett outside, the switch. Dodgers goes on. What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. I hope you guys are doing well. The New York Knicks are set to take on the Minnesota Timberwolves tonight, looking for back-to-back -back wins, trying to come out victorious once again after beating a not-so-healthy Atlanta Hawks team. You could say, like, guys like Kevin Herter were out, Trey Young, but then you could also say, like, they actually had some healthy starters, such as a Bogdanovich and a Clint Capella out there on the basketball floor, and Cam Reddish has played some good basketball, so I'm not going to take anything away from that win, even though it would have felt good to be Trey Young, but that would have been realistically, like, a different game, obviously, if Trey Young went on to play. But this game is actually very interesting when I take a look at the Minnesota Timberwolves and the amount of players they have out. They have their entire starting lineup out in this game. This is on the road, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. And I was looking back at some film. I was looking back at like their last game they played with their five starters out. Patrick Beverly, D'Angelo Russell. They have Anthony Edwards out. They have a guy Vanderbilt out. They have Carlton Towns out. They have Nas Reed out. They have so many players. I'm going to be reading down the list here when it comes to the Minnesota Timberwolves, like the amount of players they have out. Maybe a couple players might be back because a couple players did clear protocol and they had some conditioning to do. I know Patrick Beverly, um, he cleared protocol, but he just wasn't conditioned to play versus the Celtics. But this is a team without their full lineup or without any starters beat the Boston Celtics. And I'm not talking about a Boston Celtics team with Jason Tatum, but they still had Jalen Brown. They still had Robert Williams. They still had a guy paying Pritchard out there. They still had solid like players out there, like some players from their starting lineup. And for them to lose to a Minnesota Timberwolves team without their starting five, like I don't know if I should discredit the Celtics or I should give credit to the Timberwolves for, um, for playing with a lot of heart. But I feel like there's some main question marks when it comes to this New York Knicks game. First off, will the New York Knicks come out victorious? I know some Knicks fans are going to say, Obviously, the Minnesota Timberwolves don't have their starting five, like, at all. But you could also say, like, the New York Knicks, they haven't been able to string together, like, back-to-back -back wins or two wins in a row, like, in a while. I believe it's been, like, we haven't won two games in a row since October. It's been, it's been bad. If it's the guys entered protocol or it's just us simply not playing good basketball, terrible third quarters, not moving the basketball, inconsistent from beyond the arc, the lack of heart from this ball club. There's just no consistency when it comes to this New York Knicks team. So I don't want to hear the Timberwolves are not are not a great team. So, of course, we're going to come out victorious when the Magic don't even have double-digit wins on the season. Or they may like they may barely have double-digit wins on the season. I think they have seven or eight right now. And we gave them two wins. So you never know with this ball club at all. We allowed the Magic to win two games against us. But they found a way to come out victorious versus the Boston Celtics, which I think is huge. So can Julius Randle be consistent? Can he string together a couple um, good games in a row? Or he's been scoring the ball lately, but it comes down to efficiency, making the right decisions. He played a good brand of basketball. I can't discredit him at all. He played a good game. And also, Kemba Walker won Eastern Conference Player of the Week, so he's been playing a good brand of basketball for the New York Knicks. Can he continue to dribble, penetrate, shoot the three ball well, distribute the basketball, and even hustle on the boards? Like this dude, I've really liked the way Kemba Walker's been playing, and can he keep it up for the New York Knicks? That would be huge for the rest of the season, but we'll see what goes on to happen. So will the Knicks be able to come out victorious once again? Will we just, like, not overlook this team? That's one of the main jobs, like, the New York Knicks have to do. They could not afford to overlook anyone. Like, any good basketball team, like, like every good basketball team, they don't overlook their competition. They realize it's still the NBA, no matter who they're going up against. Even if they're not playing up against a Kevin Durant, a LeBron James, like, a high-caliber type of player, like a superstar on the other team. And another thing I want to look out for is Tom Thibodeau consistent with his rotations. Like, how many minutes is he going to give to an Obi Toppin? If Obi Toppin's, Toppin's playing well, is he going to keep him out there on the basketball floor? Is Quinn Grimes going to get over 20 minutes again? Like, if Quinn Grimes is playing good, which he has proven in good amount of minutes, playing good defense, knocking out his threes, you keep Quentin Grimes out there. I don't care if you gave Evan Fournier all that money. I know it's like a business decision, like you got to keep him out there on the court. You gave him all those minutes, but Tom Thibodeau has said in the past, he keeps the guys out there that put him in the best position to win. And he hasn't really been true with that statement so far, like, throughout the season. But without, like, potentially all five starters for the Timberwolves. But let's go down this list right now. So the players that are out for the Timberwolves were potentially D'Angelo Russell. He's going to be out. Health and safety protocol. Anthony Edwards. Like, um, he's actually cleared protocol, but 
He's actually going to, he has some conditioning to do, so he may not play tonight. Patrick Beverly, he's back, but he's 50-50. Like, he didn't play against the Celtics because of conditioning, so who knows, maybe he'll be back um, tonight versus the New York Knicks. Carl Anthony Towns, health and safety protocol. Torrin Prince, he cleared protocol, but he won't play in this game. I saw a report on ESPN. Nas Reed, he cleared, but probably needs to condition as well. So that is so many players out right there for, like, the Minnesota Timberwolves. I hope all these guys have a speedy recovery. It really does suck. Anthony Edwards, he's one of the best young players in the game. Carl Anthony Towns, one of the best young players in the game. When D'Angelo Russell gets hot, it's awesome. Obviously, that's bad news for the Minnesota Timberwolves, but they proven to play with heart last game and beat the Boston Celtics. Nathan Knight, I believe he had a double-double. He crashed the glass really well. He had 20 points. Guys like Greg Monroe were getting an opportunity. Like, I don't remember the last time like I heard that name. I really remember him in the Detroit Pistons uniform. I know he played for the Milwaukee Bucks as well. So that's really cool to see Greg Monroe get an opportunity, and he actually played well in those minutes. But they have a guy of like Josh Okogie out there on the floor. They have Bomoro. He's still adjusting to the speed and physicality of the NBA look out for Malik Beasley though he's been really scoring the ball lately but in my opinion it will be it will just it will just be unacceptable if the New York Knicks do lose this game like yes they beat the Celtics but the New York Knicks can't allow that to happen I understand the Timberwolves are like they fought and I really do like Chris Finch they get these he gets these guys to fight and he puts them in the best position to be successful but with a potential lineup of, of Nathan Knight Jordan McLaughlin Malik Beasley Okogie McDaniels those guys aren't scrubs but you have to beat this team, if, if you know what I'm saying. Like, I like those players right there. But if you want to be a good basketball team, you got to be able to take care of business versus teams that don't have their fully healthy team. you got to be more prepared. you got to come out with um, more speed and physicality. I need constant ball movement. We need to play a fundamental brand of basketball. R.J. Barrett needs to step up. Quentin Grimes, if he gets an opportunity. Just everyone needs to play smart. Like, you can't be making mistakes. Like, I don't want us up 15 points. We make stupid mistakes, and before you know it, like, they're only down two, like, with a minute left. Like, don't let it go down to the wire, but if it does, take care of business. Just win the game, but shout-out to all the Minnesota Timberwolves fans out there. I wish you guys the best of luck. I try to be as unbiased as possible. I understand you guys have a lot of—I um, understand your team has a lot of guys out, but you guys fought versus the Boston Celtics, so you never know what's going to happen in this game. But let me know down below your thoughts. Who do you think is going to be a key guy to step up? I wonder if Miles McBride's going to come back, but— just the whole team. Let's see what the whole team does. And yeah, thank you guys so much for the great amount of support. And peace out, y'all.